Hey, good afternoon, folks. It's Chief Meteorologist Nick Lilia here with your tropical update for September 10th of 2020, brought to you by the folks over there at Pine Belt Gutters and Remodeling. Uh, for those that have been waiting for the hurricane season to be active, congratulations. Uh, it's uh, getting very active. Although we look back through all the storm names and you kind of go, well, wait a second, Nick, it's already been pretty active. And uh, we've got uh, right now uh, four areas of interest out there from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, which means, with only four names left on the list, should all of them develop into something, uh, we would run out of names by five days from now. Let that sink in. Uh, and, and we're only at the peak of hurricane season, September 10th today, peak of hurricane season. We still have the rest of the hill to go down. I mean, we just made it to the summit. Uh, yeah, all right, well... <laughs> Uh, we've got areas on areas on areas. Uh, count them up. We got uh, one here. We got one here. The one that we were watching earlier moved across parts of the uh, Carolinas, and that's just bringing rain to parts of the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, we got uh, Paulette. We've got Renee. We've got this wave here and that wave there. So um, this is how things were looking uh, last night, yesterday, and this morning. Uh, we were able to put the Ixnay on this one here, which left us with uh, six areas, which are uh, still more areas, uh, frankly, than I'd like to deal with at any time of the year, let alone the peak of hurricane season. Uh, Paulette's going to make kind of a curly cue across parts of Bermuda, so it's likely that Bermuda is going to be impacted by a Category 1 hurricane, according to the National Hurricane Center here. And there's really no reason to think that it wouldn't be because uh, this is going to be large enough to the point where even if uh, you end up with a storm all the way over here or all the way over here, uh, it should be big enough to the point where it's going to at least impact Bermuda with something, uh, even if it's just high seas, uh, but also rain. A wind at 15 miles an hour gusting to 65 down at 997. A tropical storm, Renee. This one's interesting. So originally the thought was it's going to go up and then it may wrap around and do a little loop-de-loo, and then within the modeling, a lot of things took it back off to the northeast. There was a chance that it maybe did another loop-de-loo and then went back off to the northeast again. I'm going to show you guys here in a couple of minutes about what one of our models is showing, uh, which is the goofiest thing I've seen in quite a while. Uh, but nevertheless, it's also pegged to be a Category 1 hurricane as we head through the weekend. Uh, by Saturday, wind at 75 miles an hour, currently with wind at 50, gusting to 65, a pressure at 1,000 millibars. Uh, kind of out into the ocean, uh, mainly a fish storm for now. Uh, if you would have asked me 24 hours ago, is this ever going to impact land, I would have said no. If you ask me that right now, I have to unfortunately answer maybe, uh, which is crazy to think about. Um, 10 to 40 percent chance of development on this large cluster of uh, thunderstorm activity uh, moving across the Bahamas right now uh, as it drifts into the Gulf of Mexico and actually ends up in this area here where this other X is currently uh, for this other wave and where it is currently it's gonna retrograde back off to the west as well I know this gets kinda messy with a 10 to 20 percent chance of development as it moves back off to the west uh, the first one, let me go back here, uh, more likely to impact Florida, uh, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana with rain. The next one more likely to impact Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, and Mexico uh, with rain. Neither of these are looking great for a chance of development with only a 10, 20, 30, 40 percent chance through the next couple of days. Uh, but they do bear watching because the Gulf of Mexico, as always, is very warm. And uh, right now, it is a reasonable environment for development uh, with high pressure uh, taken over across most of the Gulf of Mexico and the Northern Gulf. With a 60 to 90 percent chance of development it's as you come off the African coast for this first wave, uh, the idea here is we're probably going to get something out of this as we head through the next couple of days. Uh, it, it still looks robust even now that it's over the open ocean. Uh, it's got uh, some reasonable uh, semi-organization to it within the monsoonal trough. Uh, so the idea is, yeah, we're probably going to get something out of this. The one behind it, no real threat as we head through the next two days, but a 40% chance of development as we head through the next uh, five days on this one. The idea within the models is that we are going to see something out of this one as well. All right, four and a half minutes later, and we now have just talked about the stuff that's already here. What's it going to do? Well, 
Uh, let's find out. We'll start things off with our GFS model, which highlights uh, Paulette here lifting off to the north, Brene here lifting off to the north as well. Uh, the one wave getting across the peninsula of Florida and this other wave getting a little bit closer to Texas, uh, the 60 to 90 percent chance to staying off to the south and the 0 to 40 percent chance coming off the coast. This is as of Saturday at 5 o'clock when both uh, Rene and Paulette are pegged to be at least strong tropical storms or weak uh, Category 1 hurricanes. Let's run this thing through Sunday and into Monday. Notice that the uh, wave that crosses over from the Bahamas, the peninsula of Florida, and gets off the coast of uh, Mississippi and Alabama, a reasonable amount of organization here. Uh, no word yet on if this is going to be a tropical storm or a tropical depression or anything at all other than a organized tropical wave. Uh, by this point, uh, the other one has moved into parts of uh, Texas, all the while bringing rain to parts of the southeast. Uh, we've got Paulette, uh, which is, come on, come on, you can catch, there you go. Uh, Paulette here making a run at the United States, but it's also going to run into a front that's going to get in the way of it continuing to move toward the U.S. Uh, we got Renee out here, wave out here, and wave out here. Again, this is as of Monday at 5 o'clock. You can see Paulette gets kind of swept up into the front. Uh, this guy ends up uh, moving ashore, likely before it can really do anything. Renee's starting to get eaten up by some dry air. Uh, this uh, first wave, the 60 to 90 percent wave, ends up moving through the Greater and Lesser Antilles. The 0 to 40 percent wave back in behind it, still out over the open ocean. This is by Wednesday of next week, so the middle of next week. Then as we head through Friday, the end of next week, uh, the wave gets pulled up and is gone. Other wave out of here, gone. Uh, 60 to 90 percent wave here. Uh, looking relatively robust. Renee and Paulette gone. This next wave also uh, eaten by a little bit of dry air. That's as of about a week from now. So all of that activity turns into one area of concern according to our uh, GFS model. Uh, what does the European say? Well, it has something else to say. Uh, I'll just put it that way. Uh, this one, uh, the 10 to 40 and 10 to 20, uh, one moving across the peninsula of Florida, the other one making a run at uh, South Texas, uh, neither of which is getting too terribly organized. But again, a lot of rain for the southeast out of these. We've got Paulette out here, and Rene are about to do a little dance, and then we've got uh, the next wave, the 60 to 90 percent, coming off the coast here. Now watch what happens. <clears throat> watch what happens with Rene and Paulette. Uh, they kind of separate. You got Rene coming up and going this way. Paulette comes up and goes this way. Uh, both of these waves are dead by Monday, and this one is looking a little more organized, though not terribly healthy, and then the next wave is just coming off of the coast. A little different than uh, what the uh, GFS is saying, but nevertheless, uh, we'll run this thing into motion. You can see Paulette turns back off to the northeast, but how about this? Uh, Rene making another turn uh, back toward uh, the open ocean of the Atlantic and making a little more of a tropical move. The 60 to 90 percent wave makes a hard northerly cut. And you know what happens when these two systems get a little bit closer within the modeling. You end up doing a little jig. And how about this? This one actually by Friday pulls Rene back down underneath the ridge. And we're going to have a, a little bit of a ridge up here. Uh, with a, a little bit of troughing. Come on, show my troughing. There we go, troughing right there. It pulls uh, 60 to 90 percent up that way. This slides Rene back down to the south, and then we got to worry, if the European uh, plays out, about where uh, Rene is going to go all the while. The next wave coming off the African coast is right there. <sighs> Again, this is only two deterministic models, but you can see how they diverge uh, pretty quickly as we get through kind of the beginning to middle of next week. Which is why, as we head through the next couple of days, it's going to be uh, relatively important, maybe not so much as we head through the weekend, uh, but as we get into next week for you to pay close attention to the forecast. Now this weekend, for the two systems that are a little bit closer to uh, the Gulf of Mexico and the southeast, those bear watching mainly for rainfall production across parts of the southeast and not as much as development. However, Again, we cannot rule that out, and I never want to discount that when we're talking about the Gulf of Mexico during the peak of hurricane season with high pressure trying its best to build in a loft. Uh, so there's a look at your tropical update for 9-10 of 2020. A lot going on. As always, brought to you by the folks over there at Pine Belt Gutters and Remodeling.